Hi everyone and welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim tutorial. I'm a 737 captain for a European airline and this channel is all about using flight simulation to replicate real world procedures. In today's video we'll be looking at an engine failure on short final into Newcastle. Now engine failure recognition isn't as simple as it sounds, it can actually be quite insidious depending on the phase of flight. So some of the things we're taught to look out for are things like the MFD lower display popping up, the aircraft might be yawing, the autopilot might be compensating from that yaw by trying to roll the aircraft, things like master cautions might pop up, noise vibration and a decrease in speed are some of the ways of spotting that the engine has malfunctioned or is failing in some way. Now if an engine fails on short final you have pretty much three options available to you. The first option, and the most ideal one, is that you'll be able to recognize the engine failure and continue the approach visually. Now this requires prompt recognition and application of rudder and additional thrust on the remaining engine to be able to maintain directional control with the existing flap setting. And with either flap 30 or 40, there should be sufficient thrust available on the remaining engine to continue to land. Now if you find there is insufficient thrust, you have a second option available, which is to retract the flaps to flaps 15, but you must ensure that you add at least 20 knots to your speed. This will ensure that you are at least flying uh, the VREF flap 15 speed uh, with flap 15 selected. Lastly, like of all approaches, you can always fly the missed approach as well. And again, it's very important depending on your configuration with the engine failure on how you go about going around. If you're already at flat 30 or 40, have an engine failure and decide to go around, it is very important that you only retract the flaps to flat 15. And if you are already at flat 15 and you decide to go around, you can go for the normal single engine go around flap setting of flat one. Whatever you do, don't go from flat 30 or 40 straight to flat one, because you might find that you're quickly falling out of the sky. Now for today's demonstration, I'll be fading the engine at around five to 600 feet, just like we would do on the tight rating, and I'll be showing you how I can use rudder and thrust on the remaining engine to maintain control and continue to a safe landing. Now I must stress, like with all my other tutorials, if you're on a tight rating of some sort or you're a line pilot, please do not follow the guidance of this tutorial. Only consult your approved training material. This is purely for entertainment purposes only. Right, let's go give it a go. So we've just become fully established on ILS 25 here into Newcastle. I'm going to start configuring to land now. So we'll select gear down, flat 15, match that speed, and we'll now complete the landing checklist of flaps. So start switches are both in continuous, recall is checked, speed brake, arm green lights, landing gear down three green, order brake is set to three, and we're just holding on, selecting the landing flap, which is coming in now, flat 30, match the speed. And we have flaps 30, uh, 30, with the green lights, landing lights are on, uh, check is complete, we are clear to land. Right, so here we are approaching a thousand feet, we'll now disconnect the autopilot and disconnect the auto throttle. it's now my aeroplane. Uh, fully stabilised, uh, landing checklist is complete, approaching two miles here, and we could just uh, continue the approach as normal, looking out for anything unusual. And there you go, there is something unusual, the engine has failed, so immediately apply thrust on both engines to stabilise that speed, keep it above V-Ref, and I've applied left rudder to maintain directional control. Remember, uh, rudder towards a live engine, or, or also dead leg, dead engine, that's the correct way to remember what rudder you need. So that's it, prompt application of thrust between 80 and 85 percent, usually for around flat 30. A little bit off the centre line, so I'm just going to make small corrections. You can always go around as well if you find yourself destabilised. We'll continue the approach though uh, for now, approaching minimums. There we are, minimums, so continue. 
Okay for centre line, approach pass looking really nice, speeds under control, uh, coming over the flare. The FO would have made a, a made a pan call as appropriate as well. Into the flare we go. 50, 40, 30, Check. 20, Close. 10. Maintain centre line with rudder. Hold the attitude and we're down. So speed brakes up. We'll still select reverse thrust uh, on the remaining engine, adding reverse thrust and applying manual braking now so we can come to a a quick and expeditious stop on the runway. We'll bring the aircraft to a, st uh, a stop on the runway. There's 60 knots and I'd reverse and as soon as we've stopped we'll immediately set the parking brake and we'll also stow the reverses. The first officer will immediately select flat 40 and if he hasn't done so already he'll also contact ATC. So now the aircraft has safely stopped, we've selected flat 40 in the event of an evacuation. We diagnose the failure. What's actually happened? Has the engine flamed out? Has there been some sort of severe damage? Is it on fire? We'd actually complete any applicable memory items and depending on the severity we could either taxi on uh, our own to our stand with a single engine or perhaps we might even have to evacuate in the most extreme situation in the event of a fire. So we'll imagine we've spoken to the emergency services after they've inspected the engine. There appears to be no signs of fire, smoke, damage or anything leaking. Uh, so we're happy to taxi to stand on the remaining engine. We'd most likely get escorted onto stand with the emergency services uh, not too far behind. We'll also have communicated with the cabin crew asking if they'd seen anything unusual in the cabin and also a reassurance PA to the passengers as well. But everything's all fine, we'll release the parking brake. Uh, we're under 60 tonnes today so it's absolutely fine to taxi on the remaining engine and uh, we'll taxi onto stand and we'll debrief the tutorial there. Alright then ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the engine failure on short final tutorial. I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. I'll pop this in my non-normal uh, playlist. I'm hoping to add some new videos in the not too distant future. Um, so you'll hopefully be able to apply some of these in your home desktop simulator at your own convenience. Uh, as I must always stress as well, like with all my other tutorials, if you're a line pilot or on your type rating, don't follow any of the guides. This is purely for entertainment purposes and for use in your home desktop simulator only. As ever, stay safe and I'll see you on another live stream or tutorial very soon. Bye-bye for now.